Force method can be used to solve for statically indeterminate trust as well. This time, let's look at a simply supported trust with 8 members. The panel length and trust height are equal to L. Cross-sectional area and modulus of elasticity of members are the same, and thus, the XL stiffness is the same for all members. The degree of indeterminacy is 1, and therefore, we need to make a trust member redundant. The selection of redundant member needs to ensure the resultant primary structure stable after removing the redundant member. For this reason, it is possible to choose member AE as redundant, but not CE. The redundant member is simply assumed cut and therefore, no force should be carried by it. At this point, the primary structure is produced, and it is ready to be solved using equilibrium equations. Making a reaction force redundant is not an option here, since the structure will be externally unstable after removing either force. Now, we have two analysis cases. The first case is where the primary structure is loaded with original loading. The second case on the other hand, assumes unit tension acting on both halves of AE cut member. The load should align with the member orientation. From the first case, the change in distance between knot A and E due to original loading is obtained. From the second case, member AE deformation due to internal force is calculated. Compatibility equation links the member actual deformation with the results obtained from both analysis cases by using the principle of superposition. Virtual work method works well with force method for thrust. Recalling that we need to establish both real and virtual loading conditions. We realize that they are resembling to our force method analysis cases. The member forces determined from both cases can be used to calculate the primary structure deformation under original loading. The output from virtual loading case alone is sufficient to determine deformation due to unit redundant force. Let's get started. First of all, we focus on the real loading condition and determine the support reactions. Then, we use method of joint to determine the internal forces developed in truss member. For a symmetrical truss like this case, we can first determine the member forces in half of the truss and mirror it to get the full picture of it. Next, let's proceed to virtual loading case. No reaction force is developed in support since the truss is not subjected to external loading. Both BC and CE are zero force members after we conduct method of joint and focus on knot C. Proceed to knot A. The unit redundant force is resolved into X and Y components. We can solve for member AD and AB afterwards. Next. We solve for both knot D and E, and obtain the force in all members using virtual loading case. Now, let's construct a table and input the truss member properties and forces. We have two columns to fill, and both are the key to the solution of statically indeterminate truss. After we obtain the deformation under both cases, we substitute it back to our compatibility equation. By solving it, we determine the force developed in member AE. By knowing the effect of one unit load in member AE towards the entire truss, as shown in virtual loading case, we can determine how would the member internal forces look like by multiplying them with the calculated member AE force, namely negative 0.21p. Finally, by looking back to original and redundant force cases we established at the beginning, we obtain the actual member forces by adding up the member forces under both cases. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.